Hey guys, today I am going to talk about why you don't see as many magic stores opening today and why a lot of these magic stores are closing. Now, first and foremost, I'm only going to really speak about Houston because uh, I know the Houston magic stores. I myself had a magic store, Pokemon store slash anime figure store for about seven years on and off. One of the main reasons that we were always on and off is rent. Rent is pretty crazy right now. Uh, if you rented a commercial, and we actually looked at buying, my partner and I, we looked at buying a commercial, we should have probably pulled the trigger on the commercial property for $550,000. Uh, we uh, have the commercial property here in Humble. We're gonna make it half a poker room and then half a Magic the Gathering because we thought there would be a interesting group of individuals uh, had we bought it we probably would have a magic store today but the rent number one reason these magic stores are closing is they're used to rent maybe 10 15 years ago pre-covid or during covid rent and now the landlords want to take back the lost profit that they have imaginary in their minds so rent is probably the number one reason most people close their magic stores either their rent doesn't get renewed or gets renewed at a much, much higher rate. The second, now of course, rent wouldn't be a problem if you were actually making good money, which you're not. And the margins on Magic product are almost zero. Uh, it is Amazon Prime Day soon. So we'll see what that has. Like, if every local game store is just waiting, owner is waiting for Amazon Prime Day, that's not a good sign, guys. <laughs> it's not a sign of a, of a atmosphere that would make too much sense long term maybe like i could see in short term you could flip some of these assets but eventually your customer base is going to figure out wait a second this dude is just selling stuff from amazon I and mean, that cannot be the proper business model but now you might be like oh what about the distributor distributors are very bad they no longer have any type of deal they no longer have any type of, there's no money in it. Um, and I will be very frank and tell you that there's just simply no money in making, you cannot make money from a distributor. The distributor has already has basically maximized their money. So when you talk about, um, and this is a very nasty situation here, you talk about working hard getting a distributor, doing all the things that are right, that they want you to do. And then the distributor price point for a $100 box that you can sell for 100 is 90 free, $95 a box. Well, you're only selling it for $100. And I said, there are other ways to make money, you know, a cafe, other like water bottles of water. Like this sounds really ridiculous, but in reality, people do need drinks and they do need water and so I kind of get it. Um, it is what it is, um, where you do have to sell these supplemental. The idea is, hey, we're going to sell supplemental products, and these supplemental products will help us balance it out eventually. So when you have a kind of a situation here where you have a lot of money being uh, spent on your game store and you're reliant on and you never want it on secondary products if you will it can get very bad very fast um, and there's not really a explanation to how to make money when your margins are that tight and you see a lot of games are uh, game stores that have been open for a long time they're no longer able to pay their rent which is obviously very bad um, if you're not able to pay your rent you're just screwed right uh, you are screwed and there's not much else that you can really bank on. I mean, rent has gone up, but you're, you're paying. And the other part is the labor force has gotten more expensive. The labor force is, I mean, when we were hiring employees, $15 an hour was considered a really good pay. Uh, this was even a few years ago. Our, our min, we're, I live in Texas. Minimum wage here is still seven twenty five, but you know, you got Chick-fil-A, you got Bucky's, which is a gas station, and they're all paying more than $15 an hour. Why? You're trying to hire someone with some type of expertise, 
which is very niche, right, in your card game, or you had to train them, which is then a very, much more expensive process because you're paying them more per hour. Uh, and then Card Kingdom has unionized California and McDonald's. They're making $20 an hour. It's really hard to justify even having an employee. And that's why you see, I was watching uh, another YouTube channel, Pokey and E. And, you know, uh, I, I actually found him via a kind of a disaster scenario. But uh, he makes some really good points. He just has part-time employees. He doesn't want to grow any bigger. He doesn't own a store. He just operates from his basement. That's the model. And it sucks because somebody got to do gameplay. I've always thought that Wizard of Coast should do gameplay. Um, they've at one point owned their own stores, but they don't because it's not worth money. Like if Wizard of Coast, come on, this is Wizard of Coast. If Wizard of Coast could make money from owning a game store, you would, right? Absolute 100% out of 100%, they would. But they have decided that game store model is not for them. And they cannot make money from the game store. Like Wizard Coast, one of the most greedy companies in existence, does not want to open a game store, even though in the past they have opened a game store. They have had multiple game stores. And now they don't. I think it is a interesting... It's not a fun place to be right now. Um, a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money uh, from a game star perspective. I don't see a way that you can make money from Magic the Gathering. And people are like, oh, well, have a cafe. Have a, you know, a lot of Magic players are very penny pinching because they think of their investments or they got. Like, you guys know the grinder player who pays $5 in the prize pool and they expect to win 50 every night. And when they don't win 50 every night, they have a really bad attitude. Like, I'm positive you've all met this type of player. They wear headphones. They don't talk to you. Often they cheat, right? You catch them cheating all the time, but they pretend they don't know what's going on. They, for them, that's like a job, right? They pay their $5 fee, right? And they're supposed to win 50 or $70 in prizes that night, every night. And they're doing it. They're working the three-hour job as if they're working McDonald's, which is probably their real job. And... You know exactly what I mean. And when they don't win, uh, they are very, very abrasive. They are very, I mean, this is your customer based in a mother effing nutshell. Community apart. I, I run a game store. I know that it all it takes is one of these effing customers and then your whole game store community, instead of being very casual, very fun, and enjoying a latte, now they're just, uh, I mean, I can name them. I know their names, right? I could name people in the Magic community right now who, as soon as they enter the tournament, you know it's not going to be a fun tournament anymore. You know no one's going to have fun. They don't talk. They don't grind. They don't even smile at you. They're, they're only there to win the prize pool. And the prize pool is not high enough. Uh, guess what? They're going to scream and yell and throw their deck at you. Right? Um, that's ridiculous, but that's Magic the Gathering in a nutshell. Right? Anyway. Anyway, uh, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys. Oh, here's a uh, menu from one of the more successful magic stores, and you can see the price of their food is quite high, right? It is quite, quite high. Anyway, bye, guys. <laughs>